Hello everyone and welcome to this machine learning playlist. Today we are covering an important topic. So whether you are someone who is absolute beginner or you have some experience with machine learning, this playlist has been designed in such a way that it will be easy to follow for everyone. Also packed with lots of values and information and it will be really helpful for you, especially if you are preparing for a machine learning based job role like data analyst or data scientist. So please subscribe to the channel and drop a like below to support our work and without any further delay, let's get started with today's topic. Hello and welcome to this new lecture where we are going to understand how gradient boost algorithm works in terms of a classification problem. In the previous lecture, we have covered gradient boosting algorithm from absolute scratch and we have understood how it works exactly in case of a regression problem. And the entire learning from the previous lecture, we are going to use it as a foundation to understand how it works in case of a classification problem here. So in case you're someone who has missed the previous lecture or if you do not have any basic understanding around how gradient boosting works in case of regression problem, then please consider checking out the previous lecture first. I will provide you the link below in the description box. We have a simple dummy data set over here that has two feature columns. First is age of the user and second is favorite feature of the application that the user is using. And within the target column, we need to predict whether the user will take the subscription or not. So we are going to consider this data set in order to understand the gradient boost workflow in case of classification problem. In the previous lecture, we have seen that when we are working with a regression problem, the first step will be our base learning model will create a new column as an initial prediction that will have same values for all the records. And that value will be the average from the target column, which was previously a continuous variable. However, this time the target column is a categorical variable with values only yes and no. So definitely we need to use a different trick this time. So in order to do the initial prediction, we will calculate something called log odds and then we will convert that into the probability of the class. So without confusing you any further, let's try to discuss these things one by one. So the first formula is for the calculation of log odds and the second one is to calculate the probability of a class. So using these formulas, let's try to do the calculation here. So the formula of log odds says we will take the log. So we are taking the log of count of class one divided by count of another class. So we will simply calculate the number of yes in the data set. So we have one, two, three, and four. So we will say four divided by count of class two, which is count of no's in the data set, which is one and two. So log of four by two is something we need to calculate as the first step and its value will come somewhere close to 0.67. As the next step, we need to apply this particular formula. So we will say e to the power at place of log odds, we will say 0.67. We have already calculated that divided by one plus e to the power 0.67. If you do the calculation and round it up, then you will get the value of 0.7. So remember that we have an initial prediction of 0.7. Please remember this because we are going to use this term further. And for the time being, I'm going to erase this. So assuming the two classes, which is yes and no, and a threshold of 0.5, one represents the probability value of yes, and zero represents the probability value of no. So a probability prediction with value lesser than 0.5 will indicate to the category no and above 0.5 will indicate to the category yes. For the time being, we have an initial prediction of 0.7 for all the records, which means irrespective of the category, if it is yes or no, we are doing a prediction of 0.7 for all the records. This is the initial prediction. And now the next step would be to add on more models sequentially to the gradient boost algorithm in order to improve this prediction for a better model performance. So I'm going to erase all of this. As a next step, we are going to add another column, which will be the pseudo residual column that we will calculate using the same formula that we discussed in the previous lecture. 
subtracting the predicted value from the actual value. So here it is. I have added the column which is residual 1 representing the pseudo residual which is the error made by the initial prediction. And if you remember the initial prediction was 0 0.7 and considering the category yes as probability value 1 and no as probability value 0. Every time you subtract 0 0.7 from 1 you will get a value of 0 0.3. And every time you will subtract 0 0.7 from 0, you will get an error of minus 0 0.7. So I hope that you have a clear understanding around how we are calculating all these residual values. And of course, this is the formula to calculate the residuals or pseudo residuals that we have also discussed in the previous lecture. So I'm expecting that you are familiar with at least this particular part. And going by the foundational understanding of a boosting algorithm, we know that we will keep on adding base learning models and the job of each and every model will be to reduce the error made by the previous model. In a nutshell, what we are going to do, we are going to pass on this pseudo residual values to the next model, to the next decision tree and its job will be to reduce these errors made by the previous model. So this is our model 2 which is trying to reduce the pseudo residual error values that represents the error made by the previous model. So it is model 2 and you can see this is a very simple decision tree really easy to interpret and the way it is trying to predict the residual error from the previous model. But we have something really important to understand here. When we were using gradient boosting algorithm for a regression problem, a leaf with a single residual had an output value equal to that residual which means if you consider this one as a regression problem, then this particular leaf will have an output of 0.7. I'm sorry, minus 0.7. In a nutshell, output will be exactly same to the residual. However, situation is slightly different in case of a classification problem. It is because our initial prediction, which was 0.7, we calculated this in terms of log odds, if you remember. And also the leaves that we have, with the residuals, these are derived from a probability value. If you remember these formulas that we applied earlier, I'm talking about those. And this is why we simply cannot use these values in order to do the prediction. In fact, we need to apply some sort of transformation before we actually do the prediction. And therefore, we will need a specific formula to do this specific transformation. There could be various transformation formulas which can be applied, but this one is the most commonly used. Although it looks slightly scary at this time, but do not worry, we are going to break it down till it becomes absolutely simple for us. So let's consider this particular leaf node in order to understand how we actually do the transformation. Since this leaf node has only one residual, so we can ignore the summation part as of now. We are not summing up anything and we will simply use the residual value which is 0 0.7 divided by previous probability value. So if you remember the initial probability value was 0 0.7 multiplied by 1 minus previous probability value. So this will be the way how we apply this formula and the final output will be minus 3.3. Okay I think over here as well where I have made some mistake this should be 1 minus actually. So I will make the correction. Okay, fine. So this minus 3.3 is going to be the output for this particular leaf node. So I will make a note over here, minus 3.3. And I will quickly erase this part quickly. Fine. Now let's do the same thing for this particular leaf node. Since this leaf node has two residuals, we are going to sum it up. So I will say it's 0 0.3 plus minus 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.7 which was the initial prediction multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.7 and I will close the bracket like this. So this term is for the first residual and we will add another term for the second residual which will be exactly the same. So 0 0.7 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.7 and I will close the bracket like this and the output for this is going to be minus 1. Just to save your time, I have already done the calculation earlier in order to keep the length of this lecture limited. So this minus one value is going to be the final output for this leaf node. And I will erase the rest of the other part. I should hire someone to erase all this. Anyways, we don't have that much budget. 
the same way I have done the calculation for this leaf node as well and its output is going to be 1.4 and this is how output from the leaves are calculated and now we are ready to update our predictions by combining the initial leaf where we had the prediction of or you can say initial prediction of 0 0.7 with the new tree output these outputs so let's go ahead and see how do we do that so this will be the formula to do the prediction we will take the initial prediction which was 0 0.7 and by the way this initial prediction value will be changed going further okay for the time being we are using this value but as we keep on adding new models the value for this initial prediction term will be changed as well okay and we will add a learning rate for example i am taking 0 0.8 over here multiplied by the tree output so let's consider the output from this particular leaf which is 1.4 so i will write it down here and if you do the maths the final prediction will be 1.8 now as you know that when we are talking in terms of a classification problem and we need to predict between two classes 0 and 1 then the final prediction will be a probability value like if it is 0 0.7 then we will vote for class 1 if it is less than 0 0.5 like 0 0.3 then we will go with class 0 in a nutshell what I'm trying to say is we need to transform this value into a probability using this formula so let me erase the rest of the part and when we use this formula I will say e to the power 1.8 that we have calculated here divided by 1 plus e to the power 1.8 and the final value for this is going to be 0 0.9 so you can understand that the initial prediction was 0 0.7 and now the new probability value is 0 0.9 this indicates that we are moving towards the right direction how do we understand that we are moving towards the right direction because the actual value for these decimals 0 0.3 is actually yes you can see wherever we have 0 0.3 most of the times we have the actual value as yes in fact all of the time we have yes so we are going to have a new column over here as the predicted probability values which will have all new probability values predicted by the help of the second model so this is the new predicted probability column the value has been derived using the same formula that we have just discussed and considering the yes category as 1 and no category as 0 when you subtract these values you will get this new pseudo residual column you will observe that with the help of the training of the second model we are doing good in terms of classifying these data points where we have value yes and we are predicting the same with a prediction value of 0 0.9 and for these data points as well and here when we have no again we are doing good by calculating a predicted value of 0 0.1 which is less than 0 0.5 but if we talk about these data points we are not really doing that good it is because we have used only two models so far only two base learning models and just for the demonstration purpose in my lectures I use only two or three models but in practical when you are solving a real life problem there will be hundred of base learning models training sequentially within a boosting algorithm so these predictions will keep on increasing till the time the residual error is becoming extremely low and exactly the same way the newly calculated residual error column will be passed on as a target variable to the model 3 that will build a tree in order to fit the residuals and using the earlier discussed formula we will calculate the output for each and every leaf node and then apply these two formulas this one and this one we will again do the prediction so you can understand the same thing will happen as we keep on adding new models to the algorithm and the more models we add the closer we will get to the actual values with lesser pseudo residual values and this was a simple demonstration on how gradient boosting algorithm works in terms of a classification problem i hope that you were able to gain an intuitive understanding around this topic although this topic is not that easy to understand since we are already moving towards advanced machine learning algorithm so i would suggest that you watch this lecture at least a couple of times more till the time you start feeling absolutely confident with this technique thank you very much for watching till the end and i will see you in the next lecture where we are going to discuss an extended version of this algorithm which is extreme gradient boosting which is a technique that has been a life savior for many people on kaggle platform and moving ahead we will discuss that how do we solve a regression and classification problem both 
using the extreme gradient boosting algorithm. Thank you very much for watching till the end. Have a nice day ahead.